Pisces friends and welcome to your horoscope for July of 2020. I can't even believe it's July but yet here we are and we have got ourselves right in front of another eclipse so definitely not a boring month on our hands that's for sure plenty of things happening up in the skies plenty of things for us to take care of also plenty of things for us to just re look at especially in terms of social things for you this month there's been so much energy going on your ruling planet jupiter has been traveling in conjunction with Pisces, not to mention your other ruling planet, Neptune is in Pisces. So there is a lot going on. I think that the Pisces feels and sensitivity is probably quite high. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have had to um, really re-gear your diets in order to be energetically fit and sound, right? There's just a lot, I think, that has come at the Pisces physical body during these energies. So hopefully you're surviving it beautifully well out there and not taking on more than you need to okay let's jump in here I don't want to waste even a single moment of time let's jump in and talk about what's going on this month right at the beginning of the month as we come in we're coming in with Mars in the energy of Aries and I want to point that out straight away because I actually think that this speaks so well to financial judgment and clarity and motion for you in fact Mars stepping into the second gives a signal of, of increased earnings so this is actually really great now between the 7th and the 16th Mars is going to have this little pause in the sky they call it a solstice and so what it kind of means is that he just pauses kind of right where he's at so if you are trying to make financial decisions especially with mercury still retrograde i would tell you at that time if you can wait to do them until after the um 12th of the month after the 16th of the month you're going to be stronger but the increased earnings i think are here now some things to pisces it's almost as if you're working on it nice and slow over here but you don't see the full payout value of it until we get to the end of the year maybe even closer to september because the retrograde energy is still so high so nothing is for naught i just want to say that guard your energy and know that mentally nothing is for naught at this particular time okay and mars here is boots on the ground level movement so this again is in your favor like i said mercury is retrograde as we come into the month so if you can wait to sign any contracts make really big decisions or anything like that um I think it's going to be a little bit more solid, especially because we still are in the space of pandemic energy. You don't want to be buying the tickets from the fifth house for this great vacation you're going to go on. And then you find out they're actually not refundable, even if there's a pandemic. So just be wise or watch all the fine print with what it is that you're doing. Okay. On the first of the month coming into July, we see Saturn who is retrograde in the energy of Aquarius and he's going to move back into the energy of Capricorn. Now this lights up the 11th house space for you. We're also going to have a lunar eclipse that happens on the 5th. It's a full moon lunar eclipse in this area as well. Now the 11th house is friends, social grouping, social media, organizations, causes, humanitarian things, right? It's a very social sphere, but it's also long range plans and goals, right? So as Saturn is coming back here, as the eclipse is happening here, this is not the first time you're seeing things in this area. You've been working on mastery, on crystallizing, um, your life around groupings, around friends, around the tribe, around causes, what do you believe in? I really feel like too that this particular mastery work you've been doing has really spoken to the fact, Pisces, that you maybe have skills or experiences that are specific to a very specific grouping of people. And that's who you're set and built to help. And if you will kind of dive into that you can really offer your expertise in that area now also because Saturn did move forward into Aquarius and is now going to come back into Capricorn my experience when Saturn jumps signs like that is we kind of have a little bit of an exodus so truly if there are people in your organization or something you're connected to socially that is just not in alignment with what you want to do and where you want to go and what you believe in anymore 
I think it falls off or you fall out of alignment with it. If it doesn't align, you are going to try and get out of the way of it. There are plenty of things going on in the world that are making it so maybe you're really having to relook over your long range plans and goals to see what you want and where you can go next based on the reality that's available in terms of being able to get there. Now that full moon does say that something has to be ended, acknowledged and adjusted. And because it's an eclipse and it creates this disruption in the 11th house place, we could also see just in the world causes and organizations getting really big and really loud. Um, and you know, there's this place of, you know, not escaping where people say silence is support and things like that. So you may be questioning some of your ideas around this, but I also feel like this is something you're going to look at with eyes of wisdom because this is not the first time you're looking at this area. You've been doing it for a couple years. You're coming at these topics with more wisdom now. You're coming at your future with more wisdom. And over the next six months that this eclipse pours out, we'll get to see what you create here. We'll also get to see what falls off for you because it doesn't need your attention anymore. On the 11th, Chiron is going to head into retrograde until December. Now, Chiron is retrograde in the energy of Aries. Again, this lights up your second house space. Mars also in the second house space. But Chiron is our wounded healer. <clears throat> He's the hole in our soul. We, we hurt the most here. We worry the most here. But it's also our greatest teaching point. If we can share what we've learned, where we've failed, where we've struggled in this area with someone else, we literally set them free. So again, to me, Pisces, as I look at how this Chiron retrograde in Aries is attaching to your identity, your self-esteem, your value, one of the things I think of with that 11th house work that Saturn's pulling in here is what do you have to to share where have you struggled what do you know that maybe is specific to a certain grouping of people and you can share with them and then you literally it's to thine own self be true by sharing what you know sharing your experience sharing your voice you literally help these other people right you know and one example I think of is is you know are you a stay-at-home parent? And so you know how to stay at home and parent. You've you've made it through. You've found some things to make the structure in your day um, more smooth. You feel like you're a little bit of a sane person. Can you reach out to other stay-at-home parents or create a grouping there so you guys can talk about that? You know, are you doctors? Are you dentists? Are you gardeners? How can you connect in a way where you share the similar um, identity shaping that is happening and changing to specific groupings of people. To thine own self be true will speak through also what you give to others this month, Pisces, in terms of your knowledge and your connection. It's absolutely beautiful. On the 12th, we see Mercury coming out of retrograde. So go ahead. Make those decisions now. You can you can definitely go ahead and do that now with a lot more clarity, knowing that emotionally and mentally, the emotional intelligence is in alignment. So you're making decisions with a fair amount of clarity. Not to mention, and this is going to be lighting up your fifth house space, not to mention that we're going to have a new moon happening at 28 degrees of Cancer on the 20th in this area. So truly, you're planting the seeds of intention. What did you learn while Mercury was retrograde in your fifth house? Did you learn about play or the areas that you're not playing? Did you learn about joy? Did you learn about um, joyfully taking care of yourself, taking a risk to put yourself out there different? You know, is there, were there things happening with your children during this retrograde time? And as the mercury retrograde comes out and comes direct, you're able to make some decisions about what to do with that, right? It's just all these decisions that come forward, but at the new moon, you again have more wisdom, you have a little bit more clarity so you can say, okay, from here, I'd like to plant these seeds of intention from here to build this thing that is next, right? What do you want next? And build it in terms of Cancerian qualities to start something, have it be nurturing, have it be nurtured and have it be secure right? So build some fair security with yourself at this particular new moon. And it could truly welcome in a new child. For some of you, it could be welcoming in a child into your life. So if it's time for you to have a baby, then I say almost happy birthday to your, your little traveler coming forward. Now, as we end this month, we're going to end with the sun moving into the energy of Leo lighting up this sixth house space for you. Now, the sun is light, heat, life, vitality. It is big. It is bold in the energy of Leo. It is at home in the energy of Leo. So in your sixth house, this is a daily routine, right? Your daily routine, your schedule, 
your work, your coworkers, things that you interact with daily in a very mundane kind of way. So they're getting a boost. They're getting a little bit of play. They're getting a little bit of risk taking. They're getting some joy, some creativity. You know, is it creative daily living? Is that what's on your agenda right now? And most certainly, Pisces, like I said, many of you I think have had to redo your diet, how you sleep, the way that you rest, all of these things. Are you looking to... Um, Give life now to those daily practices that you've been bringing in. The sun will definitely do that with bold Leo here. Just make sure that that daily routine, wherever you're allowing the life and vitality to go, is something that lights you up, brings you a little bit of joy. The daily routine does not have to be the slog where it's like, oh my God, I have to brush my teeth. I have to eat. I have to do these things. I have to walk. You know, it can actually be met with a lot of bold joy that Leo can bring to your table. Now, if you are a freelancer, I actually think this is very good for your freelance work as well. Um, it can bring new opportunities for freelance work to your table. You've been crystallizing a lot of things in the 11th house. So if you do freelance work, especially on the internet, look for um, some opportunities to maybe be coming your way as we close out this month. All right, Pisces, my favorite fish. I think it's going to be a good month. Try and stay steady, stay stable, feed yourself well, rest when you need to, and let go of the people, places, and things that don't belong on your social block anymore. All right, Pisces, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the solstice appointments, the eat and greet videos and lives that we do and all around the channel. I love you guys, and I'll see you next month. Bye.